my name is Sean Cox. I'm the special agent in charge of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Springfield Division. I, along with my partners from the Illinois law enforcement community, are bringing you this video today in the event you ever find yourself pulled over by a law enforcement officer in the state of Illinois. It is my hope from the FBI that this will help you to understand your Fourth Amendment rights as well as all your civil rights when you encounter a law enforcement officer during a traffic stop. Bar, Sheriff of Salmon County. I'm here on behalf of the Salmon County Sheriff's Office and the Illinois Sheriff's Association. In this scene, you will see a deputy make a traffic stop on a vehicle where the driver is 16 years of age and on his cell phone. The law prohibits those who are under the age of 19 to be on their cell phone, even a hands-free device, unless it's an emergency situation. The second part you will notice is the deputy finds two passengers in the vehicle that are not family members. The law prohibits those who within their first year of driving or until they turn 18 to have more than one passenger in the vehicle unless it's a family member. Can I see your driver's license proof of insurance, please? I got my insurance on my phone. Okay, I'll check that out. Why'd you post over, officer? When you passed us down there, the driver was talking on the cell phone. That's distracted driving in the state of Illinois. You guys have identification? Okay, are these family members just friends? They're just friends. Okay, I see you're 16 years old in the state of Illinois. You can't have them ride with you like that. Is there anybody that can possibly come here and give one of them a ride? Yeah, I got a friend in Minnesota County who can come by and pick him up. Okay, I'm going to go back and issue a written warning. If you can get your friend here, that'd be appreciated. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Safety is foremost in the mind of an officer conducting a traffic stop. Distracted driving can be so dangerous, the Illinois Vehicle Code doesn't allow any use of a cell phone by a driver this age, not even if it's hands-free. You don't have to answer questions, but as in this case, answering the deputy truthfully allowed the deputy to determine that the passengers were not relatives. Not answering that question would have required the deputy to conduct further investigation, prolonging the stop. Hi, I'm Chief Winslow with the Springfield Police Department. The Springfield Police Department signed on to this project because we recognize the importance of education and instilling best practices in our young motorists. We also wanted to build upon what we are currently doing in our local school district, which is teaching our young drivers what to do and what to expect if they are stopped by law enforcement, how to interact with an officer, and understanding their rights. No two traffic stops are the same, and tactics can vary from department to department, depending upon policy, procedure, and training. Other factors to be taken into consideration are the actions of the driver and the occupants, the number of occupants, the time and reason for the stop, the location of the stop, along with the totality of the circumstances revolving around the stop. What should not vary is the professionalism displayed by each and every officer. Officers should be courteous and respectful with the goal being public safety, education, and compliance with the law. In the next scenario, officers initiate a traffic stop on a vehicle for loud music. While stopping the vehicle, they observe furtive movement and one of the rear passengers attempts to exit the vehicle quickly. In the city, many police cars have two officers. They'll approach in a way that provides for their safety from any sudden movements that could pose a threat. If, as seen here, there are numerous passengers, they may call for backup to help keep the situation safe. It's not intended to escalate tension or cause additional anxiety. It is purely a safety issue. Come 
G fella cologne. Backseat passenger reached down, maybe hit something. Step back in the vehicle. Step back in the vehicle. Sit back and sit down the vehicle. Oh, send us another back vehicle. Please. Keep your door shut and keep your hands where I can see him. Turn down your music for me, will you? I'm Officer Termine, Springfield Police Department. The reason I stopped you today was you're playing your music excessively loud today. You got your license and insurance on you? Ma'am, we have ID on you. Yeah. Am I being detained? You sure are. Yes, sir. What's your man? Do you have your identification on you today? Explain yes, that to you in a second. Sir, you have an ID on you? Uh, yes, sir. Is this your current address on here? Yes. What's that? Yes. Okay. So you might step it out for me for just a minute. Come on back here for me. Come back here for me. So based upon some movements in the car when we stopped you, from your, from your backseat passengers, open the door, looked like she was trying to get away from the vehicle. Is there anything illegal in the car I need to know about? No, sir. You mind if I search the vehicle? Go ahead. Okay. What about your person? You have anything illegal on your person today? You mind if I search you? Okay, nothing sharp that's gonna poke me or stick me? Okay, go ahead and put your hands behind your back for me. So you lock your fingers. Spread your legs apart for me. Come back here to this officer here. Sudden movements or furtive movements are often signals to officers that there is either a potential threat or something illegal being hidden. These movements can give the officer probable cause to investigate further. This passenger informs the officer she didn't consent to the search of her person. The law still allows an officer to conduct a pat-down of a passenger for officer safety. The passenger exercised her right to refuse consent to a search in a way that was not threatening or belligerent and did not escalate the situation. You have a Fourth Amendment right that prohibits unlawful searches. In this case, the officer asks for consent to search the vehicle. You don't have to consent to the search, but the search may still be conducted if probable cause exists or if the vehicle falls under another exception to the warrant requirement. Hello. I'm Leo Schmitz, Director of the Illinois State Police. I'd like to take a few moments to talk with you about what to do during traffic stops. Illinois State Police troopers are trained to conduct themselves in a professional manner which is polite, respectful, and impartial. If you're involved in a traffic stop, your safety and the safety of the trooper are of utmost importance. Please keep the following things in mind. Pull your vehicle over in a safe area as soon as possible. Stay in your vehicle with your hands in clear view. Follow the verbal directions of the trooper. Compliance during the stop will help keep you and the trooper safe. The trooper will ask to see your driver's license and proof of insurance. You must produce these items for inspection. Be aware that most problems occur because of non-compliance. The side of the road is not the place to debate with the trooper. You will have the opportunity to present your side in court. You'll be treated respectfully, professionally, and appropriately. Following directions of the trooper will ensure that the traffic stop is as brief as possible so that you may go on with your day. Please remember, the Illinois State Police's number one priority is your safety and the safety of everyone on the roads and expressways of Illinois. Thank you. Act 
Morning, sir. Trooper Low Taylor, Illinois State Police. You have a driver's license insurance card on you, sir? On uh, you? Yeah. Can I hurry this up, though? Where are we headed to? And my sister's house. What you guys got going on over there? Uh, you know, football game's coming on. Football game? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, just sit tight for me. I'm gonna speak with you about some things and you guys will be well on your way, all right? Sounds all the right. reason I stopped you was for your speed, all right? I got you going yeah. 75 and a 60. Oh, Is there any reason for the speed? We don't want to start kickoff, man. You, you know, gotta hurry up. I understand, I understand. I'm a big football fan myself. All right, also, did you know that your registration was expired as well? It is. Yeah, who usually takes care of that for? Is it your mom or your? Uh, yeah, my mom usually tells me what's going on. Okay. All right, and also I noticed you had a CD hanging from the rear view mirror. And then yeah. you had a radar detector as well. Do you know that's an obstruction of your view while driving? Oh, come on, man. Also can be, also can be, it can also be an obstruction for other drivers passing by, okay? Excuse right. me, sir. Are you being detained right now? As of right now, yes, you are being detained. Your driver's been stopped for speed. So you guys will be detained for the next 10, 15 minutes, all right? Just sit tight for me, okay? okay. All right. How come you didn't have your seatbelt on when I walked up? Oh, um, my seatbelt was stuck. I couldn't get it on, sir. Okay. Do you have your ID on you as well? Yes, I do. Here you go. Have you had any citations for a seatbelt or anything like that in the past six months? No, sir, this is the first one. Okay, sir, have you had any citations for speed or anything like that in the uh, past no, six months? Like that. All right, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do for you today, all right? I can't give you a break on the expiration yeah. for the registration, but I'll give you a warning for the speed and give you, give you a warning for the obstruction of view. We'll, yeah. we'll make sure you take those down before you guys take off today, definitely, all right? Definitely. And, sir, I'll give you a, a warning for your seatbelt as well, as long as you don't have anything on, on your record showing you had anything prior, all right? Yes, sir. Y'all just sit tight in the vehicle for me, all right? All right, just so you know, I have this entire encounter recorded on my phone. That's fine. I just want to let you know that I've got a video camera going on in my car as well. Okay. You'll also be an audio recorder as well. All right. All right, you. sit tight in the vehicle for me. I'll be right back with you, all right? All right. Some violations, like the expired registration, leave the officer with no choice but to issue a citation. But most violations can be addressed with a warning, and officers are most likely to issue only that warning if the driver's actions help facilitate a safe, mutually respectful encounter. Drivers and passengers should always be treated with dignity and respect by law enforcement officers. You always have the opportunity to dispute or argue any facts in court. Because of the safety concerns, arguing at the stop is not recommended. Signing the ticket is not an admission of guilt, only an acknowledgement of receipt of the ticket. If you believe a law enforcement officer has acted inappropriately during a traffic stop or other encounter, you should report the conduct as soon as possible to the officer's superiors. The FBI investigates violations of citizens' civil rights by law enforcement officers in their official capacity. I'd like to thank you for watching our video today. I hope you found it informative and useful. And I hope it's prompted questions for you. If you have questions, I would encourage you to speak to your school resource officer, your local sheriff's department, your local police department, the Illinois State Police, and of course, the FBI. Thank you for watching.